Oh, that's me. Feel free. Do you know anything about this noise? Yes. It sounds like crazy. Is it your noise? Is it your fridge? Because I know having been a waitress, it's now that you only have a minute before everything I have never been a waitress. I have! She's never been a waitress. Oh, excuse me, I was 17 and I was there for probably two and a half months. That was the only job I ever had. Oh, perfect. Thank you. Thank you. The best interview I've seen you give is with Judy Spires, but neither of you said you were both a great brutal. No, that was very funny. With what's his name? With Tom Baker. Tom Baker. Also at Rose Bruford. All of you at Rose Bruford. I'm a fellow of Rose Bruford and you're not. Well, I left. <laughs> yes, I, after a that's year. That's what we're going to talk about. We are going to talk about. She left. I didn't. But Hello. her practice skirt was hanging in the wardrobe. That's it. Thank you so much for doing that. Okay. Okay. I'm going to run across my legs because I want to be lady like like you. Oh, my hairdresser always says, yes. don't sit with your legs crossed when you're having your hair cut. Are you okay, James? Yeah, I think we're all set. <laughs> what are we talking about? <laughs> That's not a euphemism. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, dear. Okay. Give me two seconds. No, 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 that's fine. You just carry on. Guy has yes. worked here. How many years have you Oh, worked? so many. So, so many. many years. This so is my so friend Sarah. Hello. Nice oh, little. Delighted. Right, we're rolling. Oh, we're rolling. Oh, okay. in. This is, we're in Tramp, by the way. This is Tramp, this is, my lady. This be here amazing for many man. Years. How, How many, many years have you been here? here? More than 29 years. Oh, 29 years right. in Tramp. This is me. Beautiful. You'll be this getting, man, a, you'll be this getting is, a gold watch is, soon. Yeah. You think so? <laughs> he is, you're He's making me taller with the camera, that's yeah. why. Oh, okay. <laughs> Look how tall you are. Good, She's good. tall and leggy, yeah. I'm Jenjima, very sure. thank you very much. So thank nice to see you again. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so. Sarah Douglas, my very oh. special guest, <coughs> and I both went to Rose Bruford, but our journeys went very separate ways. I went off to perform in a very bad soap opera called Crossroads in Birmingham, and she left to work in Hollywood. It was as simple as that. She left actually before her three years, and, um, and the rest, as they say, is history. Sarah Douglas, welcome to Middle Age Minx Meets. Oh, I'm middle-aged now, am no, I? No, I'm the middle-aged. No, you are middle-aged. We're both middle-aged. I'm older than you. I think I'm old. Aren't no, I? you'll never No, be. anyway, yes, you've, you've as usual, you... <laughs> no. You carry on. No. Oh, how long will you be? Well, here. Yes. One, one minute I get out. Oh, yeah. Is that okay? Yeah, yeah. yeah. He's yes, just going to be here for one minute. Mind, and then... one cappuccino. No, no. Oh, oh no, he's going to make a cappuccino. cappuccino. For the, for the oh, oh, just... Nothing like a bit of frothy coffee, isn't it? A bit it? of frothy coffee. So I suppose we'll be pausing for a minute, will we? No, no, this will all be kept in. I waste nothing. No, you don't. I've, I've, I've seen literally. your interviews. <laughs> um, this will actually be the teaser. <laughs> oh. <laughs> that actually sounds like my breathing at the moment. Oh, dear. Um, I, I will go back on that trail. I think you probably should. Did you want to drink? Uh, did you? No, 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 it just sounds wonderful, that's all. It just no, sounds wonderful. No, he's amazing, this guy, actually. What's his name, then? Do you um, think it's amazing? Go on, go on, go on. I don't see if you can find his name. Who was his name, Capri? You went in the ask him. He was born. I was going to ask him if he was here when I used to lie on the floor, but I was. Oh, my God. No. She used to lie on the floor, no. and we'll talk about that in a minute. No. You did. I, did I? We've got to talk about your days of lying reckless on the floor. abandonment. Well, that was 40 odd years ago. James, yeah, are you getting all this? I am. Tramp used to be the... <laughs> Tramp was the place to come to. Mm. And how did I ever get to be here? Thank you. Thank you, dear. Bye. Sorry, bye, bye. Don't worry. Bye-bye. Bye. That's a phony accent. No, it's not. That's a phony accent. He's from it's bloody East London. No, he's not. All that Italian. So listen. Yes, go on. I ended up at the Crossroads Motel. Yes. In Birmingham. Yes. You head off to Hollywood from Sidcup. And you go into... It took about 10 years, but okay. Yeah, but your first big film was Superman, the original mm -hmm. Superman, mm -hmm. um, with Christopher Reeves. Which was shot here. Which was shot here. It was in, I, didn't go to, um, I didn't go to America until after Superman, until I was about 30. Because nobody did then, you just didn't go to America. You, um, there were a hundred, well, there were probably thousands mm. of people auditioning for the role of mm. Ursa, mm -hmm. um, the villain, the super villain mm -hmm. in Superman. Do you remember that whole process? You know I remember that I whole process. Honestly, I have never asked she you this. She has. I have not. Oh, I just felt like I did a flea bag moment there, didn't yes, I? Yes, I know, she the has. fourth wall. Anyway. We're both breaking the fourth wall. Uh, is that what it's called? Mm. Okay. Um, 
I was filming. Um, I was filming the people that time forgot, which was another great epic um, with Doug McClure and Patrick Wayne and Dana, as in Spanner Gillespie. Don't ask me why we always have to say Dana as in Spanner, but don't call her Dana. Um, and we were in the we were in the Canary Islands, so I I was very busy being a busy actress, and that was that was being shot out at Pinewood, and it was quite a big film. I mean, it was so, I'd already done a lot of work. Um, and my career had gone from, I mean, you were right about Rose Bruford. I left after a year and I went straight off to um, 20, straight into film, my first film. So I didn't do theatre. Um, I went straight into film and everything was going very nicely, steadily along. Went off to the Canary Islands and I was busy working with um, pterodactyls and Tyrannosaurus, those sort of things. Which, incidentally, lovely producer John Dark, who I believe is still with us, John Dark, they couldn't afford to take the whole monster, so they could only take the tail. <laughs> so we had the tail, and then we had a man at the end going, Bleh! so it was one of my better acting performances, acting to that. And were you wearing thigh boots? You I wasn't wearing... wearing thigh boots yet. At that point, I was wearing short... <laughs> Let... <laughs> carry on. Carry on, carry on. No, I will carry on. <laughs> Still don't think he's Italian. Anyway, um, so I was busy in doing the people at time forgot in the Canary Islands, and meanwhile, people in in, in England were <laughs> testing for uh, oh, Superman. Superman, and I didn't know about it. And because I was so up myself, what did I? I mean, Superman was not something that we all knew about in England. No, no. This was way before um, all the DC comics and all yeah. the, the, all of the films that are out now. I kind of, I knew who Superman was, but I didn't follow him. So when I got back from that, I heard about the audition. I mean, my agent called me, and um, I was very busy working, so I couldn't take time off to go for the audition. So they said they would see me in the evening. And so it was a big deal. I had to leave Pinewood, and I had to go over to Shepparton, and I would, it was after a long day's work. Anyhow, there were eight... I mean, this is a famous story, so I'm boring all of them. No, my no, plans. I honestly don't yeah. know this. Okay, there were eight separate times I was asked to go, and eight separate times it was cancelled, and I got more and more pissy, because, you know, you get all right, and then they would say, no, it's been cancelled, or they'd be postponed. And on the eighth occasion, there was the most wonderful, wonderful casting lady who's sadly no longer with us, Mary Selway. And dear Mary Selway said, um, called me up, she said, you must, she said, give it another shot. It really will be worth it. Um, it's right up your street. I didn't, I didn't even know what the character was. Ish, but I mean, I didn't really know. So I went along, and they kept me waiting for half an hour, and I just thought, this is just this is seven o'clock in the evening, and I'm a busy working. And actress. she was very stroppy. She had a reputation of being beautiful and stroppy. Anyway, um, anyway, so I get there, and I waited for half an hour, and the director came in, Dick Donner. Now, all I have to say to you is his hair was slightly too long, and he wore blue tinted glasses, and he came from California. And I was very, still am very English, so I, I thought I should let him know that this is not the way to behave. You know, you're keeping me waiting, you've cancelled this many appointments, and blah, blah, blah. Not knowing that he was looking for an evil man-hating, you know... Dominatrix. Dominatrix, blah, 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 blah. And that was the start of the process. That was the first time. He obviously thought he saw something in me. I then had to keep going back and keep going back, and then they wanted... They didn't do a screen test. Everybody else did a screen test because they didn't want to spend the money in the evening no. because I was busy. So everybody else tested. So I just got a small office room um, and did a few high kicks and got the producers up on their file cabinets and stuff. Then, having got down to three, the famous uh, moment where they had to decide if I could fly or not or whether I was capable, because a lot of actresses would get there and they would say, right, you're 40 foot up or 60 foot up in the air and you're hanging on wires and, you know, people were panicking about it, not liking it. I, of course, thought it was a jolly good jape. So I luckily had the help of the stuntmen from the people at Time Forgot who got me ready and they showed me how to do the kipper position and I would lie over my kitchen stool at night time in Shepherd's Bush where I lived, practicing the position. I had on my black leotard and my hair scraped back and I'd got my little plimpsels on. Do you remember plimpsels? Certainly plimpsels. not what you wore in the film. No, certainly not. I went along. It's one of my better stories too. <laughs> do you believe this? Anyway, I went along for the audition I got up on the, uh, went up the stairs, they put me on the, the wires up there, and um, off, off I went, soaring into oblivion. And as I did, there were all the crew were down below, and the producers and directors, and one of the crew looked up at me, and he says, 
Here, darling, you've got no chance. The last bird flew without any knickers on. And supposedly, there had been a very well-known Italian actress who'd arrived in a fur coat and very glamorous. And she had gone ahead of me. And when she flew, she, wow, she'd gone without oh any underwear. Oh, my God. Underwear. But me, I was in my leotard and I was terribly keen. And I was also a bit like that then. Oh, jolly good. You know, it was all sort of, it was all jolly hockey sticks and Joyce Grenville in those days with me. And, um, and the Huzzy didn't get it. You did. I got it. And I kept my knickers on. And there's a lesson to be learned there for all future actresses, you see. Actually, I didn't keep my knickers on. Because no, as you that's know, a different story. That wasn't the story I was going to tell. I was meaning that... In, <laughs> well, in I've already got the best out of her, and, this, and I'm not, you know, I'm not Alan Wicker. No, you're not. <laughs> no, no, you're not. Can I just say, we are in Tramp, by the way, and um, that's why there's a lot of toing and going. So the waiters are coming in. Our version of Manuel keeps coming through that door. <laughs> And Sarah, when I said we're going to film this in Tramp, she said, I used to, I think, hang out in Tramp, but I can't remember. Because you were, you were quite a girl. I was a, I was a hell of a girl. Um, I, I came here a lot. And we are talking about, uh, we are talking about 1970, 71, 72, a long time ago when it was a wild and wonderful place. And I would come with deeply glamorous people and I'd be invited along because I was the life and soul of the party or something. I don't well, you were deeply, well, you are deeply glamorous, sorry, but you were, you were like everything I wasn't. So I was like this short little... What were you doing when I was at Trump? Crossroads. Oh, oh, God, I was in the bull ring eating a tandoori. I mean, a completely were, different... You bless you. But look <laughs> oh, at, but not look at all patronising. look at you now. Look at me now in what yes. looks like um, no, a dressing you, gown. No, you look fantastic. Um, so, so that can was, we, yeah. So, and then Christopher Reeves. Did he, Christopher Reeve made his name through Superman mm -hmm. or was he a name before? No, no, well, he wasn't a name to us. Uh, I believe he was on a, I, I know everybody will correct me if I'm wrong, so don't worry. I believe he was on a soap in America. He was very young and quite inexperienced and certainly as far as movies went. I was there on the very first day of filming, which um, was, you have to also remember, I was there with him and with Marlon Brando, which is sort of slightly... <gasps> You know, I mean, to work with Brando when you're 27, as I was, it was just oh, such an experience and extraordinary. And he was delightful. And Christopher, bless him, I remember it so clearly because we, you know, it took a very long time to get Superman shot. We did Superman 1 and Superman 2. Bless him, on the very first day, of course, he did, he lifted up his arms because that's how Superman flies like that. And he'd got perspiration marks. And of course, Superman doesn't sweat. So yeah, they had to stop and work out how to have it so that every time he went jumping off and, and, and you know, little things like that. that hold how up. did they do it? How did they? Do you know? I should imagine they clogged his paws. Right. I Would don't they, know. In I mean, Hollywood, I, I mean, were they, in all seriousness, yeah. I mean, you were extremely beautiful and there was no such thing as the, what, you know, there was no Vaseline around the lens. You, what, what, there was no high definition, but you, you were stunning. Did they, did they suggest anything to you to make you look even different? More? Well, I, firstly, I had very long hair and I wore a short cropped wig, so... You really don't know me very well, do no, you? No, I honestly thought that was your own hair because no. because also it was the era of long hair. So that alone no, no, was an enormous of... departure from most women right. on screen. So firstly, uh, what I always found extraordinary was nobody talked about it. No no hair magazine talked about it. I had went in with very... The people at Time forgot I had very, very long... I didn't have very long, but it was down to here. And the, I finished on the Wednesday on the people at Time forgot I started Superman on the Thursday. Nobody said anything about it. We clipped all my hair up. So first and foremost, that pulls up. Then there was the glue for the eyebrows, like that, you see. Then uh, supervillains don't have freckles, and I have freckles because I'm you know, freckly. And so I had to have that white makeup all over my face and on my arms and everywhere. So Because, of course, you know, when you're in outer space, you, you, you don't get much sun. Um, and, of course, again, a, a well-known a well story, but I had my... Just Brilliant. I had my own nose wiper because um, because when you become a sort of mini superstar as I did, you have people to do all these Everything. things for you. And because I was 40 foot up above, on a wire most of the day, hanging upside down, um, there was nowhere to stick my tissue, obviously, because I had that organza costume and slits here and slits there. There was no... There was nowhere to put my tissue. Um, so... On film sets, everybody has a name. So there's 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 Bob Props, or there's, come on in. Um, by the way, you join us at Tramp, and they're just preparing for a big party. So there are people coming in and out, lovely people actually, um, behind us. So and, don't and how wonderful to be here. I know it is amazing, what a, what a and we treat. are guests for them. Yeah.
So it is really lovely. We're not getting anything. We're getting an Easter egg. We might get something. But yes, so we were, where were we? We were supermanning. Just the the fact that you're in Hollywood and also... But I'm not in Hollywood at that point. You're not. You're in Pinewood. But also you're not in leather. And everyone thought you were this dominatrix in leather. Because Variety described me as a leather-clad dominatrix. I was actually wearing organza and I had plastic boots, well, PVC boots. Um, and so that image stuck, I mean, perfectly fine. So when I went to Hollywood, when I was 30, um, I just went because everybody said you should really go and I went for three months. And whilst I was there, I got the nighttime soap um, Falcon Crest. So let's talk about that because there's so much to fit in with her career. She's done quite a lot. Um, and I just want to talk about um, there is a parallel to my first episode of Crossroads going out because they literally said you won't go round the market in the bullroom, bullring, Joe, the next day because 25 million people will have seen you in um, a very bad soap opera. You, when Superman comes out, is a global, massive mm -hmm. blockbuster. At a time, it was probably the original blockbuster. Um, how, just to sum up, Sarah, how did your life change? It didn't. I lived in Shepherd's Bush. I used to go home, nobody knew who I was because I would take my wig off and back in those days, back in those days, your agent encouraged you not to look like your image. Now, this could easily be uh, something that uh, nowadays we wouldn't, we wouldn't be doing. Nowadays I'd have my hair cut short, I'd be appearing, I'd be turning up in leather, you know, thigh-length yeah, boots. Yeah. So when I got to America and I went on to Falcon Crest, they came up with the idea of dressing me in leather or suede. Um, Every week, and I was the first person on prime time, uh, prime time, into prime time soap Friday night nine o'clock, wearing leather or suede every week. Very hot indeed. That's when it all changed for me because that was when everybody, and it was, at the time, it was Dynasty was on, and it was, it was a big deal in those days. Um, everywhere I went, that was a big, big cultural shock because here in England, really and truly, nobody knew, but in America, they all knew, and then they connected it with Superman. When you, hmm. you were with Margot Kidder, you yes. were with, so, and Christopher Reeve, and yep. did they, just to go back to Superman, they, they were your mates, they, you yeah. did remain friends with them, didn't you? I, I, I remained friends with Margot, um, Jack O'Halloran and Terence Stamp, who were the two other villains. Jack, I, I was always very close to, and still am very close to. In fact, I'm seeing him in two weeks' time in Detroit, um, Margot, bless her, yes, we remained friends. Christopher, we sort of lost because they went on, he went on and did more Superman. And I think, I'm pretty certain it was just after that, about two years later, that I moved to America. Um, and, we, you know, our, our paths didn't really cross. And you did another Superman? We did Superman 1 and Superman 2 back to back at the same time. And then you became this cult heroine. Mm -hmm. So you have fans who would do anything for you even now. Even now. And this is you what's... You would be amazed. But this, yes. No, I wouldn't be. I know. Mm. I know mm. um, the following you have. And this is because of the status of that movie. What do yeah. you think... Why do you think it is? Was it because it was the first blockbuster? Do you um, I... I I mean, I, I, I ask this question all the time because I'm amazed that here we are, f we're in the 40th year. Is it 40 years? 1970 something? I think it's 40 years, something like that. Um, I, I'm going to a big Superman celebration shortly. Uh, it, it, I cannot believe the following, um, and I'm very pleased about it, but it's, and now it's mostly a, a lot of dads. I mean, they're all getting to be a certain age, but now the kids are coming up. Yes, and, and really and truly a lot more men than women. Now, interesting, back then it was all men. Now a lot more women are, are looking to my character as a, as a, as a sort of a strong, well, I mean, all the things that she is. I mean, I, I'm amazed because she was, whereas Superman was for good, I was for evil. Um, so I have X-ray eyes and supervision and uh, destroyed the world, didn't like men very much, um, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Why I have such an enormous gay male following, I'm asking all of my lovely gay friends why, and they all go, well, oh. I mean, oh. and I go, well, what's, oh. Yeah. They say, well, I was an adolescent and you were like, oh. I said, well, I, I, but why is it? I still don't quite understand that. I mean, I'm delighted and I love it. Was there a doll made in your form? There was a doll. But Do you have one? Of course I have one. I have one. I'd love a doll made out of my Crossroads character. Ooh, I don't know about that. Uh, yes, there was a doll. It didn't, it didn't come until much later and they put me in a slightly different outfit. They gave me a grey cod piece for reasons best known. <laughs> which I've never quite understood. Um, so it's, in fact, I have to tell you a story. Um, there's a wonderful line in Superman where um, 
Zod, played by Terence Stamp. Poor Terry Stamp says forever, wherever he's walking, people all shout, kneel before Zod, you know, and he says, oh, God, thank God, because this was a big line. A lot of my lovely, wonderful friends, um, I happen to know, uh, often say Neil before Ursa, you see, and there was a certain group of gay men that had T-shirts made up with Neil before Ursa and my image on it. Um, so, you know, this has been a little sort of rumbling that's gone on for some time. Anyway, quite recently, I was doing a little play over at the Trafalgar Theatre, staggered across to the coffee shop at 10 o'clock in the morning, uh, looking slightly the worse for wear and also looking like a bag lady, which is, as you know, we do very naturally. Very. Don't. It comes very easy. Takes a long time to look yes, like this. Exa <laughs> God. Yeah, ah. yeah. Anyway, in your nighty. Oh, it's not a nighty, it's house coat, sorry. Um, anyhow, so I, I have, you know, it, it happens a lot. You see somebody look at you, and I'm sure you've said, they catch your eye, and you, there's that moment you think, now, do I know you because you're my neighbour, or do I know you because... The, you, you recognise me from the telly and there's always that slight moment and you can be sure if you say oh yes I'm on the telly they go oh no I don't know you from that I know you from you know wherever mm. M&S or Boots or, or another well known store um, <laughs> anyhow so this guy was ahead of me young very very um, camp I think would be the word um, quite wonderful and he'd walked in and I'd noticed that on his t-shirt he'd got my head my face and he'd got Neil before Ursa on his t-shirt so he went ahead of me at the coffee shop and he got his coffee and he turned round and as he did, his eyes caught mine and I caught his and so I thought, oh, <laughs> he recognises me. So I looked at his T-shirt and I said, because it said Neil before us, and I said, go on then. And he just went, oh, pervert, and rushed out. And of course he thought I was some middle-aged woman hitting on him at no. 10 o'clock in the morning. No. Yes, I'm delighted to say that Twitter sorted him out and within a very short while he died of embarrassment. I bet. Thousand. Yeah. But I mean, I why just, would he know it was me? I just assumed he did, you know. I love, I, honestly, <laughs> Sarah, I love your self-deprecation and I love your honesty. But I all, I'm also fascinated that you, so you have a green card, you can work in America, mm -hmm. you work in America all the time, and then mm -hmm. you'll go and do an episode of Doctors or mm -hmm. something. Holby which, City, I've got coming up in a minute. Yeah. So you do, I mean, just because we're running out of time, but how does that compare to, you know, LA? Like, you introduced me to... Um, Megan from um, yes, Megan Mullally. Megan Mullally. All these people are your mates are on your yeah, Christmas yeah. card list, and then you'll go and do a day's filming on Doctors or Holby mm. or something. Mm -hmm. um, two days on Holby. Two days on Holby. <laughs> I mean, that's that's yeah. right, as good as it gets. Right. But I mean, anyway. do you do you? You know, I go back and I say, oh look, there was loads of work around for us um, in the old days. Not always good work. You had brilliant work. How does it all compare now? Do you think? Well, I'm I'm I've just finished. Uh, last week, I've been in Romania for the third time with the Netflix, done three films now, uh, of A Christmas Prince, where I had to embrace and get used to the idea that I'm playing the older me. The bit that's mm. difficult is not being that young, glamorous, whatever, who isn't me, who I look at now and I go, bloody hell, I didn't, wow, gosh, you know, especially when pictures turn up and I think, God, you're not bad looking, Douglas. I was completely oblivious to it. Were you really? Oh, absolutely. And I come from a family, nobody was telling me. I mean, no. I, I, I mean, I said, I mean, now I look, I mean, I knew I was good looking, but now I look and I go, bloody hell, not bad at all. And the legs and the whatever. Mm. However, there's then that big period in Hollywood, which I went through where, and that starts when you're about 30, when you're, you're, you're getting old. And of course, for me, um, because I have not had any work done. I love her for that. Everything hangs freely or not, as the case may be. I'm perfectly natural because I'm too scared. But there was a period when I wasn't really working much. Then I started mm. about, th sorry, then I started about three or, f no, probably five or six years ago. And the first time I saw myself on the screen, I thought, oh, God, because it's mm. HD and you're mm. looking older. Mm. Then I got this job on uh, A Christmas Prince and I'm playing a sort of slightly crabby uh, older housekeeper lady called Mrs. Avril, who's rather splendid and rather mean. Look at that hand coming around that door there, isn't it marvellous? <laughs> Look at it. Um, and, and I really had to think, OK, this is who I am. I am in my mid-60s. I am much older than everybody else. And this is who aren't I lucky to be here. And so the first film was, was, was very successful. I've now just finished my third one. And I am now embracing the fact that I am older, because now I am older. I'm getting, I'm getting those jobs. Thank God. And very quickly, can we raise an empty glass no, to but this? Very because quickly. no, because this is really important. Because when we were younger, actresses of our age yes. really didn't, unless they were playing oh. the nurse in Juliet or, you know, upstairs, downstairs. There were not parts, and I think that's that's 
one of the best things actually is yes. that now actresses of age are being taken and seriously. And actresses of age, let me just say, in Hollywood about two months ago, I said, a friend of mine said, what, what, uh, what are you doing? And I said, what I'm doing, blah, blah, blah. And I said to her, and so, so what, have, I said, what have you done recently? And she looked at me and she said, I've had my butt lifted. Mm. And I said, no, what work are you doing? Mm. Not what work. What have you had? That's what they're thinking. Cheers. Cheers. To Love all. her. Here's Love to Rose Bruford. Empty glass. I'm a fellow, she's not. And Tramp. Thank you, Tramp. Thank you, Tramp. Gosh, I remember this. Now show me where you fell over. Well, it was sort of there on the floor. No, it was over by that sofa, I think. I lay there for quite a while. 